So the big story this week that displaced everything else was the down flight of Prigozhin. And I'm going to answer every question that you have uh, given me about Prigozhin. I asked what are your most pressing questions about Prigozhin and I got 152 responses overnight and anything there I haven't read these anything about Prigozhin I will answer if it's about something else I'm gonna leave it alone okay we're gonna keep ourselves focused on just that topic all right is Prigozhin happy that he finally got the ammo from the MOD as demanded probably not in that direction there's a couple conflicting theories and and um, uh, about how this all went down one of the sketchier theories this is Scott Ritter's idea I put this into a video yesterday um, was that the explosion was that they carried ammunition on board and it just it wasn't properly carried and that's what caused the big boom I, I don't see that, but it's a possibility. What are your most pressing questions about Prigozhin? Hey, Prigozhin, it was a Christmas in August for the rest of the world when your plane was shot down. Well, it kind of was. Um, so how does it feel to have your chestnuts roasting on an open fire right now? That's not really a question. It's an interesting statement. Uh, I, I think, um, you know, he's probably not very happy wherever he might be right now. Um, okay, how did he manage to live as long as he did? He took extensive, I know that you're, you might not be even asking that, um, you know, fully like expecting an answer that might be a rhetorical, but he took extensive security measures, which is why people are questioning right now, like, hey, he may have had body doubles. You saw the, the, um, all the face mask and beards and false hair and that kind of thing that he had. Uh, so he was trying passports and different per So he took all kinds of uh, security measures. Okay, I'm most of all interested in what will happen with Wagner now that Prigozhin had, and a few more higher ups of Wagner have, what, have met their well-deserved fate. Uh, that's a good question. Putin still wants Wagner to work he just wants it under their control. Um, so, so you had this really weird system, and um, Anders Puck Nielsen pointed this out many, many months ago, probably almost a year ago. Like, look, you have private armies in Russia, and you could have a system where private armies are fighting private armies. Well, it didn't. It wasn't that. It was private army turning on the actual military and uh yeah but putin wants wagner to work he just doesn't want Prigozhin and his partner who was um uh had started it there so he lopped off that there was a great article in the guardian that talked about how um Prigozhin and wagner were effectively drawn and quartered and then decapitated and that's really kind of what happened over the last few weeks and months up to the last couple of days you saw the decapitation but they want wagner to work because it's an unofficial arm of russia doing russia's foreign policy work so i don't think they want to disband it they want to use it they just want to control it so i, I think that's what will happen uh in africa all right some time ago i saw an interview i think on gulagu uh, that when Wagner took a village like Solodar, the hateful residents who remained went up to the Wagner soldiers and said, we are pro-Russia. But the soldier being interviewed said that they had instructions from their commander to kill all civilians 15 or older, so they did. The remaining children were sent to Russia. Any idea if that might be true? That is news to me. I do not know about that, and so I can't comment on something I don't know. Um... I have heard of uh, essentially eliminating everyone in particular areas, but I haven't heard of the of this at this particular location or that um, or the name of the uh, the town or that we are pro Russia. So they have been very brutal, going in and just eliminating everybody that they could. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't speak to that particular instance. 
Interesting question. What was the 32nd fall or was the 32nd fall longer than the, than the 60 day wait? <laughs> um, so th that raises an interesting question of why they waited so long. And there are competing theories about why Putin waited as long as he did. And now my assumption is, like most of the Western press, that Putin was in some way, shape, or form behind this. Not obviously that he didn't pull the trigger directly, but that he was behind either ordering or knowing about what happened. Um, but why wait so long? So one theory is that Putin was getting more information along the way. He was uh, f you know, making sure that he was finding out who exactly were traitors within his midst or within his ranks. Uh, another was that he was waiting for just the right time. Now, Scott Ritter would say that how could he do this during the BRICS summit? I mean, it wouldn't make him look so bad. And Western Press is saying doing this during the BRICS summit sends the strongest, most potent message because he's doing it during the BRICS summit. And like he's saying, he's just a thumb in the eye to the world saying, yes, you can, you, I can actually do this. So I, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, why he lasted so long why I, I don't understand like you took that deal like he came back so he was supposed to be exiled to belarus but he came back and was hobnobbing at the african summit and things along those lines as if nothing had happened if i were a Prigozhin, i would have used those you know uh, aliases just to disappear like just let's let's get out of dodge let's uh, i'm on some island somewhere nobody even knows where i am um I'd find a plastic surgeon or something, put in some hair plugs. I, I don't know. I, I would I would have gotten away. Uh, but that's not how he rolled. Was he alive long enough, uh, enough to appreciate how he got played? Well, that's a really good question because the plane didn't just blow up in the sky. It fell from the sky. Something blew and then the plane kind of went down. Um, so probably... Uh, probably he was aware that something was very wrong for in his last moments. Okay, hot enough for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, my daughter mentioned the other day, well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that this person died, and I explained how he's a very, very bad person. This is my second youngest child. Uh, I explained it's very, he's a very, very bad man, and I'm really not sad about, like, I'm sad about the loss of any human life, but this was human life that was hurting other human life, and so I'm I'm glad that it's, he's no longer hurting other human life, uh, and she said, oh, like a serial murderer, like, you want to, you, you don't want to kill anybody, but you want to stop the serial murder from stopping other people, like, little kids get it, so... Okay, was he screaming Shoigu while the plane was crashing like an anime villain? Uh, it'd be interesting to know that, but I'm sure we'll never know. This is, I mean, and I, I recognize some of these questions are tongue in cheek like that, but um, yeah, it, it'd be it'd be interesting to know. I have all this information about Progosian in my head that I'll never actually use for the rest of my life, probably like. I've probably read a book's worth of stuff about him, so um, it's just a weird thing. Uh, okay, this is not a question. I believe it's not over yet. This is just the start of something more. There are a lot of people that have that kind of opinion. Um, so uh, so there, I'm conflicted about that kind of thought. Like, So uh, would, would Wagnerites be now interested in trying to take on the boss even more or would they now go you know what let's uh keep a low profile and just go to our diamond mines in south africa and or africa wherever they are and and do that kind of thing i i don't know that i i think that what putin the message putin was trying to send was don't cross me, don't do this, if you do this, this kind of thing happens. And I think everybody got the message and they're less likely to attack the boss at this point. But I could be wrong, there could be somebody who's now even more aggressive, uh, but I don't know. Um, okay, what would his life be like right now had he stuck to selling hot dogs? Um, poor but alive, so. 
What's your opinion on the fact that he probably has, plan has planned he could be killed and prepared a post-mortem retaliation of some sort? I've heard that. There's all kinds of conspiracy theories out there, and some are saying that he, he would have uh, filmed videos exposing all the dirt on Putin. I'll believe it when I see it, because until I see it, um, but it's just sheer speculation. And it's kind of speculation that we have to be careful of because it's the kind of thing that we hope for. And when we hope for something, hoping for something doesn't make it true. It's just we're more inclined to believe it, whether it's true or not. So we just have to be careful with that. If something comes out, awesome. But I don't know that he did that. Um, did he film videos with lots of Kremlin regime secrets to expose if his demise came to be? What damage can he cause pro, uh, post? Yeah, okay, so the same question. Uh, he could theoretically pose a lot of damage. Uh, um, he, he could potentially pose a, a great threat because he was part of that circle. And so it's almost like the mafia where... Um, you know, these guys got to keep each other's secrets, but I, I don't know that he actually did it. Uh, did Prigozhin know he was going to die? What plan was in place in the event of his death? What steps will the Wagner soldiers take next? Will they retaliate? Will they team up against Russia? Okay, I think even that you're asking this question is the idea that you want to see this happen, and I don't think that Wagner is thinking like this. I think they've... Um, they've gotten the message that this might not be the best idea. I could be wrong, but, and as, and as elite as the remaining Wagnerites, because what they did with Wagner was pretty ethically evil. Like they, they brought out these guys from jail, put them in the front lines, made them fight and go to the slaughter while the experts stayed in the background. So the, many of the, the Wagnerites that started that had a deep expertise are still alive. So there, there actually could be a potent threat, except I think they're smart enough not to do it. Now, do they have the means? Not, not as much as they used to. Do they have the will? Sure. They might have the will, but that will could have been gutted just now. So I, I think that they, the retaliate, I, I, I think it's something that we want to see, not something that is likely. As Prigozhin uh, seems to have carried a fair amount of popular feeling, will his assassination create extreme resentment, albeit suppressed within the Russian public rank-and-file soldiers? Could this backfire against Putin? Okay. So I'm going to defer that question uh, or refer it over to uh, Vlad Vexler, who has a much better read on the... Uh, Russian public than I do, or Constantine, who can answer that as how they would experience that. I, from my read of what Vlad or Constantine might say, I kind of doubt that uh, it's going to create a backfire. I think it's going to be more like a Navalny, like a like a um, Gherkin, like a uh, oh well, you know, don't rise up against Putin. Keep your head down. You'll be fine as long as you keep your head down and don't stick it up. I think that's what will ultimately amount from that. But uh, you know, things could happen. I can't, I can't see the future exactly. Was a good long term investment for him to buy the farm? Probably not. He already had. Uh, plenty of money and didn't need to, but that, no, that, that's really interesting though. Think about this. Prigozhin didn't come into our popular imagination until last September when he finally admitted that he was the guy that was the, the founder of Wagner, which used to be a secretive group that nobody ever talked about. It doesn't really exist. It's off the books. But then he came into this popularity and became like a uh, YouTube famous kind of thing overnight. And yeah, he he's but one year, one year and he's dead. Um, it's it's really bizarre. Uh, oligarchs um, generally want to make their money and some want the fame, too. And he really, really wanted the fame. But. Uh, he could have just kept me making money quietly and, and been out of it. 
Professor Michael Clark uh, has been doing some interesting analysis on the future of Russia, Wagner, and Africa on Sky News, British TV. Clips available online. He does interesting analysis on the recent coups and unrest in Africa, the BRICS summit, etc. Well, I'll look for that. Um, I'm not sure there was a question there, but I'll, I'll start looking for that. You know, and what you raised was recent coups um, and the BRICS summit. The BRICS summit was, should have been the big story this week, and it was overshadowed by Prigozhin's death. Um, and there was some some little breakthroughs in in, in little in areas on the in the counteroffensive, and that was all over seen uh, overshadowed by Prigozhin's death because this was just such a big thing. So there's other news that we're not getting to, but I, I'm chasing down the important thing. Um, honestly, Prigozhin being out of this is, uh, the word game changer is used too much, but it really does shift how things will move from here. Because while Prigozhin was out there, he was still a wild card that people would speculate. Are, are, are Wagner going to invade from Belarus into Poland? Are they going to come back into Russia? Are they going to be redeployed in Ukraine? Now that all that speculation is tamping down. Okay, he must have had a plan for if someone took him out. It sounds like Belarus had misplaced about half of the Wagner fighters which vowed revenge on Telegram. The big question is what might happen next. I think very little will happen next with Wagner. I think Wagner as a as a force has been neutered. Um, decapitated is another way of thinking about it. It just, uh, yeah. I, I'm not worried about Wagner, at least, in the, at least in the near term. Okay, I want to know his last thoughts. I want to know what was on his mind as his plane plummeted toward the ground. Knowing his certain death was coming, I want to know if he was thinking of security guarantees he may have set up, maybe to blackmail Putler. Did he smile knowing Russia would come crashing down as much as his plane? I want to know. Okay, again, don't know that he did any of those things. I think he was probably panicked just like everybody else, you know, trying to figure out how to survive rather than thinking. But, you know, maybe he did know that something was happening. I, I, I don't know. Greetings from Utah, Professor. Rumors are running around the mainstream media that the GRU, Russia's intelligence, was responsible for Prigozhin's death. He wasn't aggressive enough and went against them during the coup and African continent plunder. Do you have anything on that? Do I believe it's possible seeing some factions in an orc land that want more aggressive st st uh, steps? Um, and think that Putin isn't aggressive enough toward Ukraine, the GRU is one of them. So, I wouldn't be surprised if the GRU was involved, uh, or the FSB, or any other organ of the state, on largely on Putin's behalf, but perhaps working independently. Either way, um, the effect is the same, and I, I just, I feel like... Um, whether it was Putin directly or indirectly, it was for Putin to appease the boss or prevent the boss from having to deal with him. Uh, I, I could be wrong about that. I really could. I mean, if you have evidence otherwise, I'm just telling you what I what I perceive, and you know, I, I'm not perfect. Uh, but the infighting in Russia is just absolutely fascinating. Like, think about how. How many um, how many main players have been shifted around or moved because of the fighting within the military and Wagner or just within the military or whatever else? Servakin is now sidelined, like it it appears permanently. He was redeployed to Space Force and now he's lost that position the same day that the plane went down. And it's, I'm not saying that there's a coincidence there or 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 a uh, some kind of nefariousness he just he sidelined Servikin might have been one of their better generals and why I say that is because Servikin actually is the guy that withdrew them from an untenable position in Herzan and then created the obstacles for Ukraine that are there that exist right now that's making it very difficult for Ukraine to get through and he he doesn't get credit that he should have as a on the bad side, like he's one of the smarter guys on the bad side. Um, 
but they've but they've taken them out <laughs> and they've done this kind of thing this this infighting has cost them greatly and i'm grateful that the infighting has cost them greatly because i want ukraine to win but it, it's really fascinating to see how the leadership the unforced errors that the leadership has been involved in has been very uh difficult for russia okay and I, that's good no questions. I wasn't exactly sure why Putin waited until now, but it seems like Putin was waiting until Wagner was completely neutered. I'm not sure exactly that. I think um, that Putin was trying to make sure that any other threats out there were sorted out um, quickly. And that, that seemed to occupy him for a little while. And whether that's it or not he was still trying to work through and like anybody that might have had some traitorous aspirations i think that Prigozhin got comfortable flying around in russia and that was a mistake and then putin was stuck not able to show up in south africa for the BRICS summit but he sees Prigozhin flying around in africa and putin was playing second fiddle in africa like a narcissist putin couldn't take uh, look lesser than Prigozhin in russia on the world stage that you know there there is some weird dynamic there at play with putin he is a narcissist who doesn't like to play second fiddle by the way that he refused to travel to uh south africa is really telling about the power of that international warrant i mean that that it that it prevented him incentives matter and it prevented him from traveling so i think that's that's a really interesting dynamic um, but he does not want to play second fiddle. That's true. Um, but I don't know that it was this cause that I think this was probably in the works for a longer time. Um, it, again, it could be me mechanical failure, but I think it's something more than that. I read that the plane had never had a mechanical incident before. Um, it, it's <laughs> some theorists were saying, well, it's really easy to sneak a bomb on a plane. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Prigozhin was taking security measures, so it had to have some significant coordination. Um, what airspace was he going through to get to Africa? Where is his family? I don't know either of those things. Uh, and he wasn't going through to Africa on this flight. He was going from Moscow to St. Petersburg, and I don't know where his family was. I know his family was used as leverage before, um to like during the uprising apparently it appears that his family was like being threatened whether they actually had him in custody or anything i do not know assuming progression is dead how is he any longer impactful to ukraine after he and wagner group left bakhmut his influence on ukraine had been marginal as bet at best here's what might have been impactful on ukraine the top three republican candidates trump desantis ramaswamy do not support con continuing the support of ukraine and that's that's kind of true trump doesn't ramaswamy doesn't desantis kind of waffles on that and i don't know that desantis knows exactly where he stands on that and um yeah, so let's go back to the Prigozhin part of this equation. Is he still impactful to Ukraine? Um, the Ukrainians are chipping away at Bakhmut. And it, this is weird, but follow me here. So as they chip away on Bakhmut, if they take Bakhmut, Prigozhin, the myth of Prigozhin and Wagner will rise even stronger if Ukraine retakes it. And it's going to give the Russian army another black eye like look there's nobody here that can actually take this again like you couldn't take this before with this this was Wagner and Bergosian so uh, I think and periodically there will be things like that that will will you know cause or invoke Bergosian's memory but I'm, there's not a lot that you can do unless he did what you were talking about of you know putting some dirt out there in case of his demise but I don't know that he did I'd like to see it but I don't know that he did it. Okay, same question every soldier has. When's Chow and when can we go home? Okay. Uh, how can I live a life as unique as yours? I'm not sure what that means. Um, let me let me go through the comments here. Because I, I said that I replied to that uh, not realizing that this was one of the one of these. I was just, I didn't understand. Uh, what do I not understand? Uh, why do people n not ask intelligible questions? The correct use of grammar would be helpful. Protest English is not the chosen language. Be brave enough to put your life on the line. Save your country from marauding orcs. 
uh, is that the original guy saying that? I'm not, this is Anon, is who said, why did, um, your country means not to, can fo no, to be cannon fodder, no thing, I don't understand. Now, I mean, to live a life of high adventure, he was a nobody who was, okay, so you're asking, gotcha. So you were asking about Prigozhin. How can I live a life as unique as yours? I mean to live a life of high adventure. He was a nobody who was a small time criminal and then a businessman and then politically affiliated, then a warlord. Now that's a life fully lived, something to look up to, I think. So this is probably like a little bit troll-like, but it's still an interesting question. It was a very unique life. Um, uh, he, he was... Uh, certainly not a hero perhaps an anti-hero like he was he was just a bad guy who rose the ranks of bad guy land and did bad things uh, i don't know that you should aspire to that okay so who's going to get the reward money the cia or the fbi offered two hundred fifty thousand for information leading to Bergosian. um that's kind of funny uh, what about Russian interests in Africa, which uh, Wagner has been taking care of so far? Again, I think they'll continue under leadership that Putin trusts. Remember, <clears throat> trust is important anywhere, but it's particularly important in, a, in an autocracy. You have to have absolute trust that this loyalty and Prigozhin broke that loyalty. And so they'll, they'll install somebody in charge of Wagner that will keep it faithful to Putin. Uh, Moscow residents reported a hailstorm turned out to be Prigozhin's teeth. No questions. It's kind of clear. Historic times soaked them in. I wonder what's going to happen with his family now. Um, I don't know, but if I was them, I'd take that money and I would hide. I would find whatever assets I could and get out of Dodge quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how I would be playing that. Did he have time to regret his life's choices? I hope so. We'll never know. Is there a natural successor left in Wagner? No, they, they really... Yes, there probably is. But the natural successor, I would imagine, will not be uh, ascending the throne. I would imagine Putin will install somebody who he trusts. Why did he stop halfway to Moscow? So, my understanding is that they had leverage on him of some sort. Like they had his family or threatened his family or something along these lines. Um... And, you know, it's still unclear what he was going to do once he got to Moscow. He, he, he wasn't coming for Putin, but he kept claiming that he was challenging uh, Shoigu and uh, Gerasimov and they needed to be replaced. And uh, that, uh, you know, I know people will differ with what I have to say, but that's what he said. And I'm just saying what he said. <clears throat> and so... I, I don't know that what he actually planned to do, but shooting down helicopters and coming militarily with what looks like a threat was a bad plan. Who is his makeup guy? His disguise is rocked. That's that's right. Uh, where is he hiding? Uh, I don't believe he's hiding. And there is conspiracy theorists out there. And it wasn't a fascinating what I showed you yesterday with Jackson Hinkle in that, that, that last video um, where 50 or 40 some odd percent of one audience and 35 percent or so of another audience thought that he was still alive and hiding. Like these, this is the pro-Russia side that is in his audience. And that, that's what they thought. Wow. My question is this. Uh, what? What's a holla black girl? I never figured out what she was on about. I, I don't know what we're talking about either. How did he live for so long? That's a good question. Um, that's actually a really good question because I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how Putin allowed that so long because it did look very, very bad for him for some time. But as, as an authoritarian, he got his authoritarian groove back. Okay, who is running the Africa Political Destabilization Project now? We don't know, but I'm sure we'll find that out in some time. But it's it's really only, this part is really only um, tangential to what we generally focus on when we're talking about what's happening in Ukraine. What do you think will happen to his money and family? I think uh, his money will be stolen. His family will be in hiding. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but I... I think that they, if they're wise, they should hide and 
And I don't think that they there's any love lost there. What did he expect when he ended the mutiny halfway to Moscow? I, I don't know. I thought that, I think he thinks he had a real deal. Um, of course, Scott Ritter was saying yesterday in that video that uh, Putin always tells the truth and Putin's a man of his word and he never goes back on that. And somebody pointed out, um, yeah, like when he said he wasn't going to invade Ukraine the day before he invaded, or two days before he invaded. I don't, I'd like to know if suicide has been ruled out or if that's a possible explanation for Putin. Um, I've heard nobody call this a suicide, just trying to take out his own airplane and crash like that. That seems like a bizarre way to, to suicide. And I'm sure he had enough uh, explosives and access to weapons and things like that, that if he wanted to do it, he could do it without taking out a half dozen or more other people with him, including a pilot and a flight stewardess that had nothing to do with them. But whoever blew up the plane didn't seem to care about that. Uh, finally, did any piece of Prigozhin arrive in St. Petersburg? It is not me. I'm just a friend asking for Um no, uh, uh, alas, uh, there was none, none of him got there. Uh, was he shouting Shogu and Gerasimov on the way down? Did they confirm his body? Okay, so they're still working on that. If you don't see a body, he's not dead. I, okay, they're working on that and they're working on the forensics, but, um, I, you know, I, nobody survived the plane, so they're trying to work through that. His cell phone was recovered and that, that his cell phone could be determined and his body couldn't is a little weird, but they're, they're still working on that. Who was in the meeting that Prigozhin and the other Wagner leaders had in Moscow before flying to St. Petersburg? Why were they there? Was he really in Africa? I don't believe he was really in Africa. Uh, I believe he is really dead, as this said here. And um, who was in the meeting? Um... Uh, other just a, a few other Wagner bigwigs who advise you to wear that hat <laughs> what air defense will do now Where, uh, so when is it the other turn Putin's turn when's it Putin's turn I, I think Putin thinks that his calculus has actually improved his that anybody would take him on and that's why this was done now that his mercenary company is in shambles, can he still cater from beyond the grade? Just kidding. I think of more practical and serious question and post it. How loyal are Wagner soldiers to him or they were, were they only there for the money? Well, they're mercenaries, so they're there for the money by definition. But I think these mercenaries were also, uh, at least the original mercenaries were loyal to him. He's using the new ones from jail as... as uh, a cannon fodder and that preserved them so i think there was some loyalty there um the first round were released in january i believe and the first few that made through that six month period were released in january so this started last summer and um and that that probably saved a few of their lives and he, they're probably um happy for that so um yeah there probably was some loyalty but I don't know that they're going to do anything from here. Where is his liver? Uh, probably in the wreckage. Did he suffer? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure this wasn't pleasant. Um, I don't know if he died instantly on the ground or burned. Um, could his mother love him with a face like that? It's actually a really interesting question. I mean, he wasn't the prettiest man. Is there enough vodka to celebrate? Uh, will he be the last? The last what? That's a good question. The last warlord, um, their system, like even Shogu has his own private army, which is kind of a weird gig that the uh, head of the army has his own little private army. There's a private army for what the oil uh, gas prom business. Um, I, I don't know. But the system, I keep saying this, the system that you have is perfectly geared to give you what you're getting, and this system gave us Purgosian. So... We don't know. What's the role of that Africa vid uh, video as he went back to Moscow? I thought Wagner's goals were shifted to Africa again to gain revenue and foster government relations. They spe specifically asked Wagner to help. So many questions from this direction now. Yeah, so apparently he thought he was going back to business and doing this. And um, it seems like 
and now I'm saying it seems like, and this is what the Western perception is in the media. He was going back. He was going to get started. He was going to be well out of reach. But then he went back to Moscow for some meeting and probably related to this. And that's how this he was set up to do this. So uh, for the explosive, uh, exploding plane. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, I've seen conflicting reports about how it ex how it exploded. Originally, there was a U.S. official saying a surface to air missile, um, surface to air missile, and then more recently, I saw a uh, a U.S. official saying they ruled a surface to air missile out, um, which would have meant an explosion in the plane. I, I just don't know, but it doesn't really matter which way it went down as long as it went down. Um, no questions, just a comment. Progosian, good riddance. Will he go to heaven? So, how you go to heaven is through, according to the Bible at least, I mean, I can't speak to Islam or whatever, I'm a Christian, is through belief and faith in Jesus Christ and turning your life over to him as your savior and then living for him. I don't see real evidence that he was, uh, that he had had any salvific experience and was living for Jesus, I'm try, like trying to live a good life for uh, his savior. Um, I do see uh, uh, Orthodox relics in his home. Uh, like if we, when, when they did the video about what was in his home, like he had like an area with that. But I highly doubt that he's in heaven, given what the Bible says about what gets you to heaven. Like it's not good works, it's belief and faith in Christ according to the scripture. And I don't see any evidence of that in his life. So I would imagine that it's fairly warm where he is at this point. Um, how and why? What what now? Yeah, how, why, and what now? How we haven't quite established the how that caused the plane crash, but we know it's a plane crash. Why? Because he's a threat. Vlad Vexler pointed out that he's a threat either way. He's a threat alive and he's a threat dead, but at least he's a X threat once he's dead and he just kind of I mean you run the risk of creating a martyr but I think that was a preferable thing to running the risk of him coming back and doing something else and the guy just couldn't seem to help himself and not doing something else what now I don't think anything now I, I I mean I don't think there's going to be any real threat from Wagner at this point first Wagner Wagner factish I, I don't understand German I'm sorry um, please forgive. I think that's German, but I'm I'm sorry. Something Wagner, something for Africa. I I don't know. Uh, why did he trust Putin? That's a great question. Like <laughs> he's been around Putin long enough to know. I really shouldn't trust Putin, but I think it was just he was recalled because of the business deal, and he couldn't help himself about not doing the business deal. I mean, I think it's it's that simple. Will Wagner rebel, even if it's not another column to Moscow, will it inspire individual acts of sabotage in the state? Perhaps individual acts of sabotage. Maybe there are a few that will do something, but I, I really highly doubt that Wagner as a unit will do something to take on uh, the Russians. I wonder if it's a de definitive end for the Wagner group, or will they continue their crimes against civilians in Syria, Africa, and Ukraine? I think in Africa they'll continue their crimes. Uh, Ukraine, they're pretty much, they've been removed. I don't know that they'll come back. Um, yeah. Did he go to heaven? I just addressed that. Probably not, based on the, what the Bible says about you going to heaven. Um in, in an alternative Islamic version, it might be something different, uh, but I'm not Islamic and I can't tell you what that is, but I don't see any that he had any inclinations there either. Uh, so I, 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 don't, I don't perceive that he would be in heaven based on the scripture. Um, did you think that he had faked his own death and that, his, uh, that of his comrades to escape their inevitable demise at the hands of the FSB KGB? No, I do not think that at all. Is it possible? Perhaps, but the outside possibility seems so slim that I, I don't even entertain that at all. Do you think that the Wagners will disappear or join together for revenge against Putin? No, I don't think they'll join again together against Putin. Um, I, I just I think as far as Putin's con concerned, it's pretty much over. What air defense doing? I 
don't know what you're asking. Uh, who will replace him? Somebody loyal. How do you think uh, things will fare now in Africa with Bergosian gone and the apparent dissolution of Wagner? I think they'll carry on and do a reasonable job of whatever the African warlord or president or whatever wants done, and they'll get paid handsomely for it, and they'll keep the good times flowing as far as revenue, diamonds, oil, uh, weapons, that kind of thing. What is all this BS worth your life? Was all this BS worth your life? Yeah, I mean that's that's really the the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, yeah, because he's he's dead now as a consequence of this, and uh, he he really painted himself into a corner, and I mean that's that's it. Africa, well, we know that they're going to continue, no questions. And is he really dead? Yes, I believe that he's really dead. I don't I don't see any reason that he's not. Um, now, with all this, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm just trying to answer your questions. I'm not, I'm not trying to be provocative or anything along those lines. But I, I think this is a, a legitimate summary of where we are. Uh, I've read dozens of articles in the last three days just about Prigozhin, and I, I don't see other scenarios. But there could very well be. I'm, I mean, I, I don't have the corner of the market on truth, so. But this may very well be the last time that we're talking about Prigozhin in any meaningful sense. And uh, I think that's a, a real possibility. Okay, that's it. I hope that that helps you uh, close this chapter on Prigozhin. And um, thank you for your time and the likes and the shares and the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine. I'll be back tomorrow and I hope you will be too.